and uh, it's been going around the community. Uh, I found out it's uh, hit even Minnesota and Illinois. It's just, uh, uh, just a bug that uh, uh, affects you, and it is what it is, amen. Um, but uh, um, anyways, I appreciate uh, those that are able to help out in those ministries. And uh, for instance, Brother McMillan uh, stepping up and, and taking care of the sound this morning. I appreciate him doing that. Let's ask the uh, blessing on the uh, Sunday School offering here this morning. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Brother, uh, um, my, yeah, Brother Paul Reck, thank you. My mind just uh, drew a blank all of a sudden. And, uh, uh, but anyways, Brother Paul Reck, would you ask the blessing on the offering, please, Brother? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day and Sunday we get to spend together in your house. We ask that you be with us today here and bless this time of offering. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is uh, amazing. I'm still working on uh, healing up. By the way, keep, uh, keep praying. Uh, I had my checkup. Um, uh, it was a two-week checkup on this last Tuesday. Uh, the doctor, uh, he said, everything's looking good. But he said, I'm really concerned about the swelling still. And I still, I, I, I do have a praise. I can feel just right along the very edge of my nostril, which is awesome to me. Uh, that means there's feeling. And he was pretty confident. He said, you know, he said, I, I think, uh, he said, if you had not gotten any feeling back whatsoever, he said, I don't think it would come back. But he said, the fact that you're getting some feeling back, um, and he said, the fact that that area is getting smaller, uh, he said, uh, I'm very confident that you're going to get all your feeling back. And uh, so I just praise the Lord for that. And uh, uh, there's two plates in my face in the shape of an L. Uh, they're, 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 that's what their shape is, but they're kind of in a weird uh, position, but it is what it is. And uh, it's healing up, and uh, uh, do continue to pray for healing, though. Uh, it's still not 100%. Um, it still uh, hurts. I, even this morning, I, I contemplated taking a... a my oxycodone and I was like uh, do I take it do I not take it uh, so I, I took took a Tylenol and an ibuprofen and hopefully that'll uh, subside the pain just enough to uh, uh, be able to uh, think clearly amen so forgetting brother Paul's uh, name was not Perkins so that was all on me and my wife went to the doctor the week and that went to the thing yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> very true. Very true. Excuse me. Anyways, it is uh, it is good to be in the house of God. And uh, um, without any further ado, if you would turn your Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter number eight. Acts chapter number eight. Being that it's Roundup Sunday, I mentioned this last week. We were uh, we've been looking at the mark of maturity. By the way, and. Uh, um, uh, the disciplined life, the market maturity. We're going to continue that lesson next week, uh, Lord willing. And uh, uh, but today we'll take a quick break uh, from that. Uh, look at this particular passage, Acts chapter number eight. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of stories in the Bible. By the way, every single story that's in the Bible is true as far as uh, the truth of God's word. Uh, there are some stories that are, are called uh, parables. It's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, and uh, uh, the parables uh, uh, most times are not true as far as you know that that particular uh, thing didn't really happen. It was just uh, the Lord giving a story uh, to try to give an understanding uh, to people. Uh, yes, thank you for closing that one down, and maybe the the one behind you as well. Um, that way, that sun doesn't get in my eyes. I appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Yep, there we go. And I already had started on the one vehicle out there, and, and what's that? Vitamin D. Amen. I I like vitamin D. I take lots of it. Uh, I have to be careful on taking too much of it uh, because it does uh, cause me to get uh, kidney stones. I think I'm, I'm not exactly entirely sure on that one, but I, that's what I'm thinking because uh, there was a time a few years ago where I was taking a little bit too much, and uh, the doctor said you need to back off on that. So, anyways. Um, uh, yeah, you can't get too much sun, though, no other than just getting sunburned. Um, anyways, Acts chapter number 8 here. Um, this particular passage is dealing with, uh, there's a, a man by the name of Philip, and uh, we're going to pick up here. Uh, we're going to read just a few verses here, uh, beginning at verse number 25. <clears throat> 
excuse me, and then uh, reading just a few verses here, um, and then we'll uh, have a word of prayer and then get right into uh, the lesson here this morning. And beginning there, uh, Acts chapter number 8, and by the way, if you have a question or comment, don't be afraid to raise your hand. I may try to finish a thought or a sentence, but I'll get to you as quickly as possible. Acts chapter number 8, beginning there in verse number 25, and it says, And they, when they uh, had testified and uh, preached the word of, of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, uh, which is uh, desert. And he arose and went, Behold, a man of Ethiopia, oh, Ethiopia uh, and eunuch, of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, uh, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit uh, said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself uh, to this chariot. Philip ran thither to him and uh, heard him read the prophet Isaiah, uh, talking about the book of Isaiah, by the way, uh, and uh, uh, said, Understandest thou what thou readest. And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. I'm going to stop there and we'll have a word of prayer and then we'll get right into the lesson here this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, I pray now that you bless our time together. Lord, bless uh, your word. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'd guide and direct my lips here this morning. I pray that, uh, Lord, all of our minds would be uh, focused on the lesson here uh, Lord, uh, all other distractions would uh, uh, would be eliminated. Lord, help us to not be distracted or be a distraction to anybody else. Bless now our time together. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, the title of this uh, lesson, by the way, is uh, The Value of One. The Value of One. You know, uh, each and each and every one of us uh, have value, amen. And uh, you know, you need to really examine uh, or ask yourself this question: what What is the value of one soul? What is the value of one soul? Boy, I tell you, uh, even even one soul is you can't put a price on a person. You can't put a price on their soul. Um, you know, every single person has a, an eternal soul, and uh, that eternal soul will spend eternity in one or two places. Every single person listening to the sound of my voice, you have an eternal soul. You're going to spend eternity in one or two places, either uh, the place called heaven or a place called hell. Heaven is a place of everlasting rejoicing and being with our Savior, and uh, hell is a place of everlasting torment and uh, um, you know, where the, the Bible tells us the worm dieth not. Uh, there's a, a fire that burns and burns. You, you don't burn up. Uh, it just burns forever. And boy, I tell you, I wouldn't wish my worst enemy there. Uh, you know, there are some people that say, oh, I just wish them to go there. And, and uh, no, I, I don't. Uh, I don't wish anybody. Um, even just uh, recently here, this last week here, uh, we had a uh, Supreme Court justice uh, passed away. Uh, my desire is that she accepted Christ as her Savior. But if she didn't, I'll tell you this, uh, she's going to be uh, uh, you know, uh, in that place called hell, burning forever and ever. And as I said, I wouldn't wish anybody uh, to go there. But what is the value that you put on one life? What a, to invest in one soul. You know, uh, uh, our desire, our prayer is that we reach uh, Eau Claire and the surrounding communities with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that people would come to an understanding, say, hey, I need to be saved. I realize I'm a sinner in need of a savior and and uh, I need to uh, put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And, uh, uh, you know, if we are to reach Eau Claire and the surrounding areas, it's uh, uh, w with the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's going to uh, begin with us reaching people one soul at a time. You know, uh, uh, you know, we may not be able to see uh, 3,000 souls at one service saved. We may, may not be able to see 5,000 saved at one service, but we can see, uh, you know, 3,000 saved and 5,000 saved over a period of time. We can, uh, uh, we can each reach uh, one individual and each of us have to be willing to say, hey, uh, I'm going to do what I can. Uh, you know, if we're rounding up souls and doing our best to reach them with uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, we're uh, going to do our best to reach even one soul. 
And here in our text, Philip is led of the Holy Spirit to go south of Jerusalem. Um, as we look at our text in this lesson, I want, to, uh, I want to put yourself in the place of Philip and ask yourself, what is the value of one soul even to me? You know, uh, What am I willing to do to reach that one soul? We're going to see, uh, I think I've got five things here this morning, or six things, five, five things here this morning that hopefully will be a help and encouragement to each of you. First of all, number one, you must listen to the Holy Spirit. You must listen to the Holy Spirit. Uh, notice in verse number uh, 25 and following, it says there, and they, uh, when they had uh, testified, uh, Acts chapter number 8, verse number 25. By the way, if you don't have a Bible, there are some Bibles in the uh, uh, pew rack right there in front of you, and uh, one of the hymnal, uh, hymnal pews, uh, or not hymnal pews, pew Bibles, there we go, uh, are right there in front of you. You can use those. The book of Acts is uh, in the New Testament, uh, so it's after uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Um, and so toward the back of the Bible. But anyways, uh, uh, there in verse 25, and they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many, many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the uh, way that goeth uh, down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and what? Went. You know what? Uh, um, I've heard of many different people where uh, the Holy Spirit prompted them to go and talk to an individual uh, uh, about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, uh, not too long ago, we have a young man that comes to our church, Carlos. Uh, many of you know him and a member of our church. But uh, uh, back in February, um, Brother McCoy came to me and, and he said, Pastor, he said, uh, I think Carlos is, uh, you know, needing to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. And and, uh, you know, I think he's ready to be saved. And, and I said, okay. And uh, so I, I easily could have asked my son, uh, you know, hey, son, uh, take these pens up to my office quick, like if you would, and come right back. And, and instead, I said, hey, Carlos, hey, can you grab that box of pens there and, and uh, you know, bring them up to my office? And I just grabbed one little thing. I don't remember what it was, but I had one small thing in my hand and I walked off. And he's like, oh, yeah. And uh, so I got him up into my room and uh, in my office there, and began to share with him the gospel and, and asked him, you know, I said, has anybody ever shared with you, um, you know, how you can know for sure where you'll spend eternity? And, and Carlos was like, no. And I said, is this something you'd be interested in? And he said, yes. And uh, so I shared the gospel with him and got done. I said, what would you like to do? And he's like, I need to get saved right now. I'd like to invite Christ into my heart right now. And I said, okay, right there in my office. I think it was uh, around February 14th. I don't know, it wasn't at that date, but it was close to that date. Uh, they, the kids had had uh, um, some kind of a thing here at the church, but uh, um, that was when he got saved. And, and uh, you know, sometimes we have to go out of our way, inconvenience ourselves. Um, you know, I was planning on just coming to the church, picking up my kids, going back home. I was tired. I'd had a long day. I didn't feel like talking to a whole lot of people. And then Brother McCoy said, hey, can you talk to this individual? You and I have to be willing to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Philip was sensitive to the moving of the Holy Spirit and went out of his way to go someplace that he had not been to before. You know, notice in our text, it says that they had preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans and they were going back to Jerusalem. And then in verse number 26, it says the Holy, you know, the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is desert. He's like, Oh, okay, well, there's desert down there. I'm What's down there, Lord? D just go. Amen? Sometimes we don't always have the answer of why. Why we uh, uh, have a flat tire. Why we uh, run into somebody. You know, uh, I've had times where, uh, uh, you know, just recently, uh, because of the accident with my face, uh, I was talking with an individual, and uh, um, he actually had had the exact same thing happen, only on the other side. And I'm like... Oh, wow. Hey, twinsies. Amen. <laughs> and uh, so that opened up the door to be able to talk with him uh, because he had not been talking to me at all. It wasn't until I was explained to another gentleman that he said, hey, I had the same thing happen to me. 
And uh, then I turned and began to talk with him and shared with him very briefly the gospel. He works uh, for the Eau Claire PD, and uh, I was able to share with him the gospel. You know, you never know why God, you know, I, I don't know why God allowed a softball to hit me in the face other than I've been able to witness to my doctor. I was uh, at my checkup. Um, he, uh, I was telling him about all the injuries I've had. I said, yeah, I said, when I was playing basketball, I said, years ago, I said, I had my two front teeth pushed back to the roof of my mouth and had my lips split open. He goes, ooh. He goes, man, that, that ain't good. I'm like, no. And I was playing football, and uh, I had two, uh, two pastor friends break two ribs uh, in two plays uh, back to back. And he, go, he looks at me, he goes, that's it. You're done playing sports. Amen. I said, wait, no, not yet. Amen. I said, I still have volleyball. Amen. And, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, knock on wood. Um, uh, but in all reality, uh, you know, uh, the Lord en uh, enabled me to be able to witness to him. And I said, you know, God is still good. And you know, I, I told him that. I said, God is still good no matter what, what has happened with this. And I said, I'm very thankful, very grateful for what you've done and, and fixing my face. I said, my wife is very grateful for that too. I said, at least I'm a little more handsomer and, and less ugly than I was before. But you know, the reality, of, he got a kick out of that one too, he laughed. But you and I need to realize that we don't know why God allows us to go through some things other than maybe God wants us to be able to witness to somebody or be able to uh, allow us to uh, minister to somebody uh, when they're going through the exact same thing. In order to reach even one person, you have to, be, uh, you have, to have a sensitive heart to the Holy Spirit and His leading. Many Christians are unable to hear the Holy Spirit because they are tuned into the world and the things of the world. You know, uh, it, it amazes me. You know, I would encourage you, if you uh, are just kind of discouraged about the news, just turn it off. Amen. I'll be honest, I haven't uh, seen even just some of the very, very minimal of the local news. Uh, most of the time it's just the weather and then the other stuff is just so uh, inundated with other garbage. I'm like, oh, just turn this and let's watch something else and, and uh, all that. But, you know, uh, it's amazing. Uh, the world is, you know, and Satan is using the world to vie, uh, vie for our attention, trying to get us distracted. And as Christians, we need to be uh, willing to listen. Philip was uh, willing to listen to the, to the Lord. Are you willing to listen to the Lord when he tells you to talk to that one person? Boy, it's not always easy. We have to step outside the box and say, boy, I don't know this person, and I'm not sure who they are, and they got a beard, I don't. And, you know, I'm just kidding. Amen. But, uh, you know, the reality of it is we don't know uh, who that person is. We don't know how the Holy Spirit has already worked on their heart. I remember uh, uh, Brother Paul Reck. Uh, he's, oh, he is in here. Uh, when uh, uh, Brother uh, McCoy and... Uh, actually, it was Brother McCoy and Brother Josiah were out door knocking and, and uh, invited Brother Paul. And Brother Paul said, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there this Sunday. And Brother McCoy came back to church and, and he goes, oh, Pastor, we ran into this one guy and... He goes, I don't know. You know, I've heard, I've heard people tell me this before, but he was just like immediately, oh yeah, I'll be in church this Sunday. He goes, I don't know if he'll be here or not. And I said, well, you know, never know. And I said, we'll just pray and you know, let God work on their heart. Unbeknownst to us, God had already been working on his heart to come to church. Not necessarily our church, but just be in church and, and be in a Bible and, and get in the, in the Word of God. And, and when he came, you know, he, he uh, boy, I mean, he got it. Amen. And uh, just been, been amazing how the Lord has used him. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was going to say, this is amazing because I just heard a message about it this morning. And each one of us is very important to God. And what do we do? You know, the Lord, it says all the things he's done for us. And yeah, we spend more time on our phone. Then we do, like you just said. Amen. Amen. Very true. Yes, sir. I think it's so interesting how God pulled Philip away from all work. Everybody else. Yeah, yeah he pulled, you know, that God was doing a work in Samaria, and God said, okay, I want you to stop doing what you're doing, and any preacher or anybody that's involved in ministry would say, God, but you're working here. Why would you have me leave? Amen. We're getting saved. Why would I leave, you know? Amen. And there's no doubt that God used that uh, to be able to reach uh, all of Ethiopia. There was, uh, uh, there's no doubt in my mind because uh, that man had great influence, was able to take the gospel back and, and uh, uh, tell others about Christ. <coughs> but I, <coughs> excuse me. Everybody was 
Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 It'd be really good if each of us would be willing to say, hey, I'm going to inconvenience myself, but listen to the Holy Spirit when He tells you, hey, go talk to this person and, and uh, you know, step out of your comfort zone. Uh, be willing to talk to them. Are you going to uh, go out of your way, though, to get in touch with that one person that the Holy Spirit tells you uh, to go out of your way for? So you must listen to the Holy Spirit. Number one, you must listen to the Holy Spirit. Number two, uh, you need to share the gospel with everyone. You need to share the gospel with everyone. I saw somebody post recently, and uh, uh, a, a per, an individual I know, and the person said, "Well, you know, you, you shouldn't share the gospel with everyone." And I, I was like, "What?" <laughs> um, uh, I did scroll on, and I was like, "Well, whatever. I'm not going to get an argue with this argument with this guy." But uh, the gospel is to whosoever, and it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter the background. It doesn't matter what they have done in life. It doesn't matter uh, uh, how they're dressed, how they're not dressed, whatever. They need the gospel of Jesus Christ. The problem with uh, some Christians is they get that uh, Calvinistic attitude. Well, this person's going to die and go to hell whether they want to or not. And this person's going to die and go to heaven whether they want to or not. And, and I don't really have a say in it. That is such garbage, amen? Garbage from the pits of hell. I want you to notice Acts chapter number uh, uh, 8. And uh, picking up there again in verse number 27, uh, where we left off, he said, And he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great uh, authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had uh, the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, <coughs> excuse me, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. You know, this per was a person of authority. This uh, eunuch was under Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, uh, of the Ethiopians. And Philip didn't know this man uh, from Adam. Amen. He had no clue who this guy was, but he was willing to talk to him. He, uh, he, you know, he had never met him before. He didn't, you know, say, oh yeah, hey, remember we were in Jerusalem in passing, you know. Uh, he didn't talk about that at all. He just, uh, Lord said, hey, go talk to this guy, and okay, and, and he goes to try to talk to this guy, and, and uh, it doesn't matter, by the way, who they are. We need to share the gospel with everyone. You know, uh, uh, year, a few years ago, I went to a thing called Capital Connection. Uh, it's down in Washington, D.C., and uh, uh, what it is is it uh, uh, encourages a bunch of pastors, independent fundamental Baptist pastor, pastors, uh, to uh, go and meet with their uh, state representatives and state senator, or U.S. senators, I'm sorry, not state, uh, U.S. representatives, <coughs> uh, and U.S. Uh, 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 Congress, and uh, uh, you know, we go there, and uh, with the senators, we have to set up times ahead of time uh, because their, their schedules are very busy. And that, and with the representatives, we can actually go to their doors and just meet with them very briefly. And uh, uh, but it, it just uh, it was amazing because uh, we were able to talk with uh, people about the gospel, whether they were in the room. Uh, there was one I remember uh, it was from uh, uh, Representative. Uh, uh, in uh, Kine's office, <coughs> I didn't get to see Congress. <coughs> excuse me, I didn't get to see Congressman Kind at that time. Uh, but uh, I was able to meet with a gentleman in his office, and the gentleman in the actually had the same last name as me, Hallett. And uh, we uh, um, we don't we think there might be some kind of relation because uh, uh, we might be related somehow because uh, he. Uh, was from the southern part of the state. That's where my dad uh, grew up at, uh, down in uh, Janesville area. And that's where he came from, was Janesville. I was like, oh, wow. I said, uh, there is very big possibility that we're related somehow. And uh, uh, we didn't get into genealogies and all that, but uh, uh, I figured we must be related somehow. But uh, um, anyways, sometimes... We 
a congressman or a senator or a president or a governor or uh, uh, you know uh, somebody in authority, you know, a doctor, uh, uh, maybe a police officer, uh, uh, you know, somebody like that. That we many times will look, we'll say, "Wow, I don't know that I can I can talk to them about the gospel because I feel intimidated." Look, yeah, yeah, they do. They put their pants on the same way you and I do, uh, one leg at a time, and and uh, put their socks on the same way, uh, one foot at a time, and and it is what it is. Amen. We're all human beings, and and people need to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, it doesn't matter who they are, uh, what they uh, uh, you know, what they are in life. Uh, we need to be uh, willing to witness to. Them. How often have you witnessed to your doctor? You know, they need to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. They need to know uh, that uh, Christ uh, came to die on the cross for their sins. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we uh, uh, sometimes feel intimidated by, by them, but they need the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, you may have to be inconvenienced in order to witness to someone. So, uh, number two, you need to share the gospel with everyone. Number one, uh, you must listen to the Holy Spirit. Number two, uh, you need to share the gospel with everyone. Number three, you need to meet others where they are at. You need to meet others where they are at. Listen carefully. Notice in our, our text there in Acts chapter number eight, <clears throat> and beginning there in verse number 30. Acts chapter number eight, and verse number 30. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him uh, read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, uh, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and when, uh, uh, I'm sorry, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. You know, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Philip was willing to meet the eunuch where the eunuch was at. Now listen carefully. This doesn't mean, uh, you know, in order to reach the drunkard, you go to the bar. Amen? It doesn't mean, uh, you know, you need to uh, shoot up with the uh, drug addict in order to reach the drug addict. Look, they need to know that there can be a change in their heart and life. Amen? They need to know that Christ can change them. Yes, sir? Amen. Amen. Very true. Yes, sir. I think it's talking about the same thing as you know you're talking about uh, the intimidation thing, where it shouldn't matter. You know, this guy was a eunuch. He had, you know, I'm sure you think about Phil. He was in the middle of the desert, and he walked up to a guy in a limo, basically, and said, "Hey, are you having issues?" And that's what yeah. he did. Amen. But whether it's a uh, you know, somebody in a limo or somebody that's got a needle in their arm, we shouldn't be, I'm above them or I'm beneath the other person. Right. They both need Christ. Right. And it doesn't matter uh, where they're at, but we do need to reach them where they're at. You know, we need to, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, witness. Down. You're just being Christ to them. Amen. Um, I've met uh, not all the judges in Eau Claire County, but I've met a number of them. I think I've met um, all but, I think, two. It's one, no, it's the newest one. Uh, she recently got elected, um, anyways, uh, or appointed. I don't remember which it was, but anyways, um, I think she was elected. But anyways, uh, with those judges, what I've done, and each time I've been in a courtroom. Now it's been a while since I've been in a courtroom, you know, because of the pandemic here, but. Uh, what I did is I would ask after the uh, proceedings were over, I'd ask the judge, uh, may I please approach the bench? And they'd say, sure, you know, because they'd know who I was. You know, I introduced who I was. They knew, you know, I wasn't just some, you know, kook off the road, uh, you know, off the street or whatever. And uh, uh, I just went up to them and many times would give them a gospel tract and just say, hey, I want you to know I'm going to be praying for you. And uh, I want you to read something. It's so important. Now, uh, you know, me personally, uh, I don't, you know, again, I feel very intimidated when uh, um, I go, you know, especially, at, you know, at, when you're in a courtroom, you're talking about some uh, uh, somebody that is able to make some decisions on some things. And so it can be very intimidating. Amen. Uh, just to uh, be honest about that. 
but I've asked the Lord, Lord, give me boldness to share the gospel uh, with this individual. And, and uh, um, so each judge, uh, I let them know, hey, um, you know, I'm praying for you. And uh, I want you to take time to read this and, and uh, give them a gospel track. You know, you never know what God will do uh, with that track. Uh, but you need to be able to w- reach them where they're at. Um, and uh, you don't uh, see uh, here in, in the... Uh, in our text, you don't see Philip judging the eunuch. You don't see him judging him for, uh, you know, again, he was a eunuch, uh, but he was uh, in a great authority. Uh, so no doubt he probably had a gold crusted, uh, uh, gold crested, uh, uh, chariot. Uh, no doubt there was, uh, you know, uh, you know, some things that he was wearing that somebody said, you know what, this guy, uh, this guy is in authority, but he has a lot of money. Amen. And, uh, by the way, rich people need saved, uh, need to be saved as well. Amen. Uh, but, uh, sometimes people can be intimidated by that. And, uh, we can, uh, uh, if you see there, uh, the Philip doesn't judge the eunuch for who he is. He doesn't say, well, he's an Ethiopian eunuch. I'm not going to talk to him. Philip goes and says, Hey, what are you reading? Amen. Hey, do you understand what you're reading? Yes, sir. Another part of that, like say, where they're at, is the idea that you know their theology may be all they may not need to know what their theology is. Right. They may have heard something, Roger, but they may try to say something to get you off on a rabbit trail. You know, like the lady did with Jesus, where she said, "You Jews worship in Jerusalem, but we worship." And he, and Amen. To the gospel. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, uh, one of the things we can do is uh, show our love and care for somebody without judging them. Uh, you can love a person and still hate the sin. Amen? Uh, so many times people think, well, you know, if, if we tell them that we hate the sin, we're telling them we're hating them. No, we're telling them we're hating the sin, but Christ still loves them and died for them, and they need to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. Philip, as I said, didn't uh, 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 judge the eunuch, but he was willing to come alongside of him where he was at. Said, "Hey, let me help you understand who you're reading about. Hey, let me let me tell you who this person is." And he began to preach to him. Jesus, we'll see that here in just a moment. We can have understanding where the person is at without justification for their sin. The problem with so many uh, Christians that they they say, "Oh, oh, we just need to love everybody." Well, okay, we can love the person. We can still hate the sin. Amen? And just because we hate the sin does not mean we hate the person. The problem is, is that, that uh, Christianity gets such a bad rap for uh, you know, being willing to say, hey, wait a second, sin is wrong. Look, if it's, by the way, if it's wrong in the Bible, it's still wrong today. Amen? It doesn't matter. I've heard people say, well, pastor, this is 2020. Uh, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? He's still the same. He's not changed. He's not all of a sudden said, oh, this is 2020. Oh, oh, this sin is okay then. No. But we can come along and say, hey, Jesus, He cares about you, and He can change your life if you trust in Him. Amen? Then that person gets saved. Now we can try to help them be able to have victory in those areas in their life. Amen? We're not going to be able to, you know, uh, uh, just share with them the gospel and and say, hey, you need to change all these things right now. Look, it's going to be the Holy Spirit working. Man alive, I've shared this before. I've got to be careful on time here. Um, uh, When uh, when I got saved, uh, July 14th, 1996, there was a few years, it was, uh, uh, let me see here, it was uh, July of 2002. Um, let me back up actually a year, bef- year and a half before that. So it was around uh, 2001, two, uh, beginning of 2001, something like that. Maybe 2000, I don't remember exactly. So about four, four or five years, uh, some in that neighborhood. Uh, from the time I got saved to the time I finally got victory over the language that I was saying, the things that I said, that I, I knew they were wrong. And I justified in my head, well, I'm a truck driver, you know, truck drivers do this, they say this, it's okay. Well, ah, Brother, Brother Slama, I'm not doing it at church. That's, that's my, that was my excuse. Well, I'm not doing it at church, you know. But I tried to justify it. The Holy Spirit, every single time, 
this is wrong. You know it's wrong. And I'm, you know, I'd say the word, and the Holy Spirit, you know this is wrong. You know this is wrong. Amen? But again, we try to justify our sin. And that's what we're not, not what we're talking about. We're talking about loving the person where they're at, not justifying sin, but showing them love and compassion and understanding where they're at. Even Jesus would tell the person, hey, go and sin no more. He didn't say, hey, uh, you, you wicked person. No, he'd just say, hey, uh, you know, like the, uh, uh, there was a woman caught, caught in, a, in the midst of adultery. And, uh, you know, he said, hey, where, where are they? In the, in the, where's, the, where's your accusers? Well, they've all left. Okay, well, neither do I condemn you. Go on, sin no more. See, he was trying to help her where she was at. Trying to help a person out of their sin, not helping a person in their sin. There's a big difference. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. But you see, if you don't meet them where they are at, you can never lead them to where they need to be. It is so important to realize where they're at. Number one, uh, you must listen to the Holy Spirit. Number two, you need uh, to share the gospel with everyone. Number three, you need to uh, you, uh, you uh, need to meet others where they are at. Uh, number four, you need to uh, to clearly give the gospel. You need to clearly give the gospel. Look very carefully in our text there. Acts chapter number 8 and verse 34 and 35. It says, And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this of himself or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him who? You know what bothers me? Uh, I've heard people where they said, boy, I went to a, a church service and the pastor got up and talked about the Packers. Look, this year, I don't care to watch any, anything right now. It's, 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 that's a whole other issue. But anyways, like I said, the news, I've just turned it off. I'm like, I'm done with it. I don't even listen to the news. Um, you say, well, where do you get your news? Well, I need to watch the weather. And even the weatherman lies. And he'll tell you, hey, you know, it's going to be sunny out. And then you're cold and rainy, you know. And you're like, man, I'm alive. The guy just told me the truth last week, you know. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, we believe that. Philip, though, he gave the eunuch the clear gospel of Jesus Christ. The problem with Christians is that they, don't, they often don't give the gospel clearly to the unsaved. I went to a funeral one time. At this funeral... Uh, the individual gave the gospel, what I was hoping was going to be the gospel. But by the end of the uh, sermon, you couldn't tell if it was salvation by grace through faith. You couldn't tell if it was salvation by works, by baptism, by church membership. I mean, you, uh, it, 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 it was so unclear. I was like, oh my stars, what in the world? It just happened. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You and I need to give the gospel very clearly. You know, uh, something you could do, uh, uh, the gospel, by the way, is this. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. People need to know that. He made a way into heaven. He is the only way. There's not a, you know, there's not the Baptist way and some other way. No, Jesus has a monopoly on the way. There is only one way, and it's through Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter what anybody else uh, thinks or says. Jesus is the only way. He arose from the grave, and he lives today. Amen? That's the simple gospel. The problem with uh, so many Christians is that they don't know how to give the gospel out. I want you to notice with me real quick. Like, uh, you can give somebody what's called the Roman roads, uh, Romans Road to Heaven. Uh, Romans chapter number 3, very quickly. And you can write these down if you'd like. Romans chapter number 3. Actually, on the back of our gospel tracts, uh, we have some of these verses. Not all of them, uh, but a, a number of them. Uh, Romans chapter number 3, verse number 10 tells us this, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So you can tell a person, hey, nobody in this, uh, you know, I'm not righteous, you're not righteous enough to get yourself into heaven. Amen? Verse number uh, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know what I've asked people to do? Ask them, hey, have you ever sinned before? You know, and sometimes I get the answer, oh yeah, but once in a great while I get, no, oh, no. I'm like, you just sinned, man, that's... Right here, you know, but anyways. <laughs> then uh, Romans chapter number 6 and verse number 23. 
Romans chapter number 6, verse number 23. For the wages of sin is death. You know, you, uh, uh, you can give somebody the gospel by telling them, hey, you work at a job, you know, uh, oh, you work for the post office. Oh, man, man alive. He's the reason why my mail is late. By the way, it was late this last week here, like three times. It was like seven or eight o'clock at night. We're getting our mailman. Our mailman's rolling in, but that's our mailman. Amen. But, but uh, it was, it's not, it's not him. Amen. But he's still, yeah, he's taking the boxes you know, out of the back because the guy's trying to deliver mail. But anyways, no, um, where was it? Oh, wages. wages. Okay. With the wages, you can go, you can talk to. Where do you work? Oh, you know, you work this much. Oh, you earn this much per hour. You know, I just heard uh, Brother McMillan uh, got a raise at his job. Man, praise the Lord. And uh, even more so than what his other offer was on his other job. And I was like, man, that's awesome. Amen. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, a wage is something you earn, you deserve. And that's what you can explain to them. Hey, for the wages of sin is death. This is what we deserve. Amen. We deserve death, the eternal separation from God. But it goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. They need to know that salvation is a gift. It's not something that can be earned. It's not something that they can uh, you know, try to do and merit uh, for themselves. Uh, it is them simply trusting Jesus Christ as their only way into heaven. The gospel is offered freely to every single individual. Yes, sir. Amen. Here's a good thing that I would encourage you. Uh, 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 Donna mentioned about uh, Donna Brecky mentioned about having your phone. Uh, you can get a phone, an app on your phone, a Bible app. It's very simple to get. Um, I've got one. It's called eSword. I put it on my phone, and uh, right now I don't have my phone. My phone's recording. Amen. But uh, uh, I pull out my phone, and many times I'll I'll make it bigger too, so people can see it, and I'll have them read it themselves. Read what that says right there. What does that say? Amen. Uh, Romans chapter number uh, 5, verse number 12, you can t explain to them where sin comes from. And it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now, not every single person is talking about Adam, all right? Talking about Adam. Not every single person has heard the story of Adam and Eve. All right? There's some people you come across, they'll, oh, who, who, Adam, who? Amen. And so you have to explain, hey, Adam uh, and Eve were created uh, and by God. They were put in the Garden of Eden. Uh, they had uh, uh, a tree they were not to eat of. Amen. God had told them, don't eat of this tree. What did Adam do? Hey, this looks good. All right. And because of that, we have sin. We have death. We have all that because of Adam's sin. So we can explain to them, hey, uh, this is why uh, why we have sin. But then you look at verse number 8 of that same chapter. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So you can explain to them, hey, even though we're sinners, hey, we got a God that loved us enough to send his only son to die on the cross. Amen? And he did that because he loves you and me. Boy, that's some love. Amen? I've said this before. I have uh, uh, three boys and two girls. Uh, I could not give up even one of them for anybody in this world. I would give up my life for any of my kids. Amen? And honestly, I'd give up my life for you before I give up any of my kids. Why? Because I love my kids that much. But you think about this. God loved His Son and loved you enough that he's willing to give his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Well, that's some love. But that's uh, uh, what he did for us. And then uh, uh, look at Romans chapter number 10 very quickly. We've got to move along. We're almost done here. Uh, Romans chapter number 10, verse number uh, uh, 9 and 10, and then verse number 13. Uh, actually, what I usually do is take him to verse number 13 and say, okay, uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, and I'll say, uh, we can put your name in there. For if Jake shall call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. Uh, for if John shall uh, call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. For if uh, uh, Neil shall uh, call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. For if Pastor Hallett shall call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. It doesn't matter who they are. Amen. Put their name in there. Make it personal. Yes, sir. Everybody knows John 6, 23, the same thing. For God so loved you, I haven't put their name in there, that he gave his only begotten. Amen. So 
That's a verse that's already started. John 3.16. Amen. We want to make sure we get the right reference there. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. But verse number 9 and 10, I've heard people say, well, how do I do that? Verse 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. My dear friend, you can make the gospel very clear. It, it should not be something where you know people are wondering, uh, well, I, I don't know now, how do I get saved? They should be able to, once you've shared the gospel, they should be able to say, hey, yeah, I can see it. Boy, it is so exciting when somebody, it's like that light bulb, it goes on, and they're like, oh, yeah, can I do this right now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, no, I've never said that, amen. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes, let's do it right now, amen. And boy, it's so exciting when uh, somebody gets it and gets that. Uh, uh, it, it just, you and I have to uh, care to be able to give the gospel out clearly, amen? Uh, make it so they can understand. Uh, you need to, get to clearly give the gospel. So number one, you must listen to the Holy Spirit. Number two, you need to share the gospel with everyone. Number three, you uh, need to meet others where they are at. Number four, you need to give the gospel clearly. And lastly, number five, you need to take time to teach others. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. We're going to uh, hit on this very quickly, all right? Listen carefully. Uh, I'll talk fast. You listen quickly, all right? Uh, Acts chapter number uh, 8 and uh, our text there, verse number 36 and following. says, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away uh, uh, Philip, uh, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Philip took time to teach him. The, you know, the eunuch's like, hey, there's water, wow, wow, can I be baptized? By the way, here's a great uh, teaching uh, thing real quick like. Verse number uh, 37. Verse number 37. There are a lot of versions of the Bible that take verse 37 out. You take about verse 37 out and go from verse 36 to verse 38. Now you got baptismal regeneration. You said, what's that? I'm going to teach you very quickly. It means baptism uh, washes away original sin. That does not happen. Baptism, all it is is a picture. When uh, I'm about to uh, talk to somebody about uh, baptism, you know what I do? I tell them this. Who is this? Looks like you. That's, uh, that looks like me because it, it, it's a picture of me. That's right. I've had people say, oh, that's you. No, it's not me. It's a picture of me. Amen. You have to have the real me in order to have a picture of me. Amen. Baptism is just a picture. It's just a picture of what really happened in here. When somebody understands that and they're like, oh, man alive, it's like that light bulb again goes on. Amen. But it's taking the time to teach them so they understand, oh, baptism has nothing to do with salvation. If it had to do with salvation, what I do is I take them to uh, the thief on the cross. You know the three thief on the cross? There were two thieves on either side. The one said, hey, Lord, if they, you really be the Christ, get us down from here. The other guy is like, hey, wait a second, we deserve to be here. He does not. And then he turns to Jesus and said, hey, remember me today. And the Lord says, by the way, you got to be baptized. Is that what he said? No. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You know, right then and there, that guy was a wicked person. He was a thief. We know he was dying on the cross for his sins. Amen? But Jesus Christ saved him right then and there. Yes, sir. But I tell him, I said, first of all, he's been talking about the Amen. It's so important, though, to take time to uh, uh, teach. And uh, um, this is one of the reasons why I really appreciate uh, uh, Brother Chop. Uh, he has a new, uh, what's called our New Life class. Um, it is to teach uh, so you understand. And, and uh, uh, we kind of even go over, you know, he, he goes through, you know, whether you're a new member or a new convert, uh, he goes through some things. And you may say, well, I already know all that. That's fine. We're just going over it just to remind you and make sure we're on the same page. Amen. That's all it is. 
And I appreciate Brother Adcock when he taught that class as well. But uh, sometimes we need to think just, we need to get the mindset that not just winning them, but taking time to teach them uh, the gospel and teach them uh, the things. We need to disciple others. So uh, the value of one, what is the value? Uh, how, how much do you put a value on one soul? Boy, I tell you, it is so important to realize how valuable every single soul is in this world. Uh, they are very valuable. All right, we got to stop because of time. I've gone way over. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. Bless now the preaching service this morning. I pray you'll be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.